cheers. I don't know how you say cheers in Thai, but wow. I don't know if I like that. It's loaded with coconut inside. The giant bridge is right behind me. Lots of flip-flops, lots of water bottles. Oh my God, they're like garbage dumps. Just, just where they collect the trash now, an old broken house. It's got a moat around their house. Welcome back to a new video, guys. Today we are in the area across the Khao Praia River. Uh, I always forget the name, here it is. Welcome to Bang Ka Chao. That place here, and we've just come across here and it started pouring while we, we came across. It never rains in Bangkok, well at least in the last two months, but it is coming down so we have to wait before we start exploring. And what we're gonna do is have some Leo beer. Now I know Singa is one of the best beers, but Leo is here, Chong is here, and we decided to go for this. This was 40 baht for a beer, so I'm gonna crack it open and try it. Look at that, ice cold, cheers. I don't know how you say cheers in Thai, but. Wow, that is ice cold. Leo, lager beer since 1998. Not as old as me, but the gold. Let me show you guys what it's like out here. So here's the conditions, guys. We're right here along the Cow Praia. Oh, I just got so river. You can see it's really foggy, misty looking out there. Here's the bike shop. We're gonna rent a bike and everyone's waiting for the rain to cool down before they can. But let's check out the river view. Not so bad looking on this side. This side, oh, it's about the same. Just really foggy, really misty. But it looks like the rain is slowing down. We should be able to leave here and start exploring pretty soon. Just like 10 minutes ago, you couldn't see any of that. All that was completely just gray. All right guys, we're ready to go. We got our bike here. It is a cruiser bike here. This is a, a blue beach cruiser-like bike, I guess. It was 80 baht for the entire day. So for the next five hours, this is what it looks like. Got a big seat for the big booties. We got some storage space if we want to buy anything. We got some gears here. We got a bell to tell people to get out of our way. A basket to pick up some animals. You know, this is what it's looking like. Let's hit the road. Well guys, this is my third time here to the area that's just across the river. I love coming here, especially on the weekend. It's like an escape from Bangkok. And you know, lately with the bad emissions and just the bad, poor air quality in Bangkok, this is a great place to get back to nature. As you can see, lots of greenery around. Uh, maybe the air quality isn't as good here. I'm not really sure, but they do have the green lung, which absorbs all those emissions. So it does help. And just being here on the weekend is a total escape. It's like a total relaxation vibe and a way to just de-stress from all the noise and craziness of Bangkok. So I'm happy to be here again today and to explore for the next five hours. Of course, I'm here in the afternoon. I never get here early enough in the morning. It's difficult to wake up really early when you kind of stay up late, but it is what it is. I'm kind of fighting some raindrops right now in the face and it's so strange because it really never rains in Bangkok, at least in the last two months of me being here since, you know, November, December, and January. And that time that I've witnessed here which is like maybe a little bit more than two months. It just does not rain, not even a sprinkle. And today, it was an absolute downpour, which was crazy, but at the same time, it was wonderful. It was like a way to cool off, and it's kind of what Bangkok needs, what this area needs. You know, give the plants some water, the animals have something to drink, you know, maybe people collect the rainwater and they can turn it into other water, clean and, purified water, however the process goes. All right, enough talking. Let's keep trucking away down the road here and see what we can get into today and, you know, explore some different places that we haven't been yet. Whoa, 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 whoa. See this here, this is usually the market. Today's Saturday. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon and there's nothing happening at the market. Wow, that's strange. Oh, okay.
Okay, maybe it closes earlier. Hmm. All right, guys, we have made it to the first stop on today's tour of this area. We are heading to the floating market. I have not been to the floating market yet, and I'm really interested to see, is it really a market that is floating? Or are there just some restaurants or some things that might be floating with a river around it or a canal? We're really gonna find out. Maybe try some food, get something to drink maybe again. So I think this is actually the floating market part, you know? There's like a little canal running along this way, and then you have a restaurant here called Six Slash Two. I'm not sure what the name is, but you can see that's the idea of the floating market. Then over here is more like a parking lot with different, different uh, vendors selling fruits, food, and clothing. All right, here's first impressions of the market here. They're selling lots of different things on each side. Things you can buy for the house, waffles, what are these? Oh, I don't know what that is. Dried fruit, dry fish, seafood, oh, very strong smelling. Lots and lots of food here. Oh, look at that, brownies. Wow. There's a lot of stuff in here. Look at that, you can buy a thermos to put cold water in, a cold beer, a fish waffles. Oh, look at those. Wow, some art you can buy for your house. It appears that it goes way back, way over there. Oh, ice cream, that sounds pretty good. Get some jewelry. Some shoes for 450 baht. What is that, fish tanks? Guys, after that rain has left, it is like a sauna out here. It is insanely humid. Man, I'm like sweating. I see a lot of other people sweating too. They're like drying themselves off with rags and everything. But this market area is cool. It's like a big giant square. You can kind of just walk around it and see what people are selling. Lots of clothing, lots of merchandise, food in one area. It's kind of designated. So you have all the merchandise in one area like here. And then on the other side where you enter, it's more food. Wow, look at all that. It's like crackers and chips and banana chips. Lively over here. Whoa, little oh, pancakes. Hello, and ice cafe mocha, please. Yeah, please check out this little uh, cafe stall, the rabbit. Right at like the entrance of one of the sides of the market. Lots of uh, options here. Very affordable too. 50 baht for majority of the coffee. 40 baht for the tea. Excellent. While we wait for our coffee, we're gonna head over here and go to this stall and get some pancakes. I'm not really sure what it's called. Hello, yes, just one. Thank you. So that's what this dessert looks like here. Thank you. Not sure what the name is. Maybe that's the name of it there. No English written, but this is a very popular street food in all of Bangkok and Thailand, I believe. Wow. So if you want to know how to find the rabbit stall, look for G45. G45 is the coffee stall here. And then this pancake one is A43 with a little chubby boy logo. All right, having a pit stop here. Just picked up an iced mocha coffee from that rabbit stand for 50 baht. Let's see how this tastes. Pretty mochi, mocha e, pretty chocolatey, right? I don't know if there's coffee in there. There is, but I can't taste it. I think I gotta shake it out. You might be thinking coffee after having a beer. That's kind of weird. You're right. It is pretty weird, but this is refreshing. So I wanted something sweet to go with the coffee, and these little pancakes. They look like they would do the trick, but I don't know anything about them. I believe there's shredded coconut in there and they're a bit purple looking. I have no idea about the name. Maybe you can tell me what the name is in the comments, but let's give one of these a go here. Oh my God, it's really crunchy. Mmm. Wow. I don't know if I like that. It's loaded with coconut inside. Really like, gooey and slimy. That's really interesting. The coconut is really slimy, but it's very hot because they 
you know, fried it. And it tastes like it's some sort of corn mixture. It doesn't taste like flour. What is this purple mixture that goes around the coconut? I don't know. I taste corn for some reason. So we're sitting right here along the river. This is like the floating market part. You can see there's a boat where they do some cooking sometimes, but obviously not today. But along here are these little fishes. I don't know if you can see that. They're just swimming. They're needlefish. They're the same fish we have in the United States. Wow, check out this old chessboard. It's made of wood. The pieces are glued down so you actually can't play. I was hoping you could play. I wanted to play, but it looks like somebody broke a piece and possibly stole it. Wow, look at this wood carving here. You have some bowls, palm tree, somebody doing field work with a conical hat like in Vietnam. Wow, that's pretty cool. Lots of old stuff in here, old radios from like the 70s probably. This is an old rice turner. It's like a, a pottery yard out here. Lots of pottery. So this is the area of the floating market, Bang Nam Pueng Floating Market, 2566. Maybe that's the year right now, I'm not really sure. But this is the vibe here, there's lots of people coming in. Right here doesn't look as busy, but it is busy as you get in deeper, you'll see more. But we're gonna head out to another area, hop back on the bike and explore. So now the goal is to actually go from where we are now. We're located almost in the middle of this region and to go all the way down towards the south. We haven't been to the south yet and down there, I'd really like to check it out and see how different it is from the rest of the area because I feel like most tourists stay in the center and around the market, the floating market that is, the, the street food market, the farmer's market, whatever you want to call it. But we're gonna go down there and check it out and see what the vibe is like in that area. So as we make our way down towards the southern point here, I want to give you guys some information, some helpful tips, especially to those who haven't been to this area and might be looking to come here. Now to get over here, you just go to the local pier. It is called the Glong Doi Pier. I don't know how to pronounce it. I probably butchered it really bad, but you can look on the map and it's, it's right at the point that's a little bit south from the metropolitan area at the top of the Gao Praia River. I've come over here three times now, and out of the three times I have been here, the price has been different one time. So the first time I came over here, I paid 10 baht each way, and that was on one of those little tiny wooden boats with no cover. And then the other two times, the boat was bigger and took more people. So generally, if the boat is bigger, you're going to pay 20 baht each way, so it's 40 baht round trip, sometimes you pay 20 going there and then you pay 20 coming back or sometimes you can pay 40 altogether at the start and that's what happened today but if you take the little tiny wooden boat it's usually 10 baht each way which is much cheaper but there is no cover from the sun you're more likely to get splashed by some waves and not only that you can only go with maybe seven to ten people because it's a smaller boat so if you are looking to come to this area keep in mind of that price is very affordable now when you come over here off of the little boat ferry. You can walk around if you would like. If that's what you want to do, you can walk, but just keep in mind, you're going to need to walk a lot. This area is very spaced out with things to do, so you're better off to ride a bike, get like a scooter. With that being said, as soon as you get off the boat and you come over here, there's a bike shop there called M Bike. You can rent a bike there, it's super affordable, 80 baht for the whole day, or you pay an hourly rate, and you choose from a couple different bikes that you want. And the bikes are in great condition, Especially this one I got on today. It's a newer bike, so you won't have to worry about that. You can rent bikes in other places on the island, so if you happen to drive over here with a car, there are other places to rent bikes, so there's no worry about that. Now, another thing to keep in mind is English is not really over here, you know? Some people know some words, of course, the basics, but I will definitely say the experience of English in this area is much less than it is in the metropolitan area of Bangkok near the, the public transportation and all the tourist sites over there. So don't expect people to speak English. Use a translator, uh, point, use some body language, you'll get by, it won't be a big deal. All right guys, as you can see, we're driving. Well, we're not driving, this isn't a car, this is a bicycle. We're riding along the main road here. It's much busier, more traffic. It's a bit noisier. 
I haven't seen any tourists over here riding any bikes because most of them just ride along the, the back streets in the beginning of the area, but it's an uh, interesting atmosphere over here. You can tell it's becoming more populated. There's more houses that are pretty close together, more uh, cars parked along the road, less sidewalks, less bike lanes. Well, we've been riding for about 10 minutes now, and uh, if you can see off into the distance down here, there's a humongous bridge. Is this Bangkok's biggest bridge? I have no idea, but it probably is, or maybe it's not. Maybe we can get over there, we can check it out. Maybe there's a nice view along the river. All right, no more bike lane, unfortunately. Only on the other side. I don't get that. Why is there a bike lane on one side, but not the other? It should be on both sides. Look at that. You know you're getting back to a populated area when you see all those telephone wires. Wow, we've made it about as far as we can get in this area. And as you can see, the giant bridge is right behind me. It's so big, I can't even get it in the full frame here. But there it is. It's very beautiful looking. And there's about, I think, one, two, three, four of those big giant towers. There might be more maybe down that way, but I can't really see because it's very far has to be the biggest bridge in Bangkok. So you can kind of see in the distance there, there is another bridge uh, there and there. It's really far away, it looks really big, so it might be identical to this big bridge. But don't quote me on that as I don't know. If you know, let me know in the comments. I'm interested to know if this is the biggest bridge. Back on the road again. All right guys, we're getting pretty local over here. It's pretty much, uh, really like deserted kind of like abandoned look at that house i don't know if anyone lives there but it looks very uh, broken down that one that one over here oh my god they're like garbage dumps just just where they collect the trash now an old broken house there's now the garbage dump wow that's wild hello <laughs> little kids playing and enjoying the time it's super super like just remote, whoa. Another workout park? Interesting. These damn speed bumps. Oh. Yeah, I don't think any foreigners come down here because all the locals over here, the little children that are playing, they just keep saying hi. Every time somebody sees us, they say hi. Really quiet. So here we are in this little forested area called Gung Bang Kakao Urban Forest. I uh, never heard about this place, just stumbled upon it, but the reason why we are over here is close to here, I believe there is a beach. Um, maybe not a beach to go swimming because it's pretty much the same water quality as this whole area, but it's a beach where I guess you can kind of go to the edge of the water and have a view. So we're going to find out. All right, bikes, you better be there when we come back. Okay, look at this area. We are walking along a bamboo bridge here and I believe it's going to dump right into the edge of the river, so-called the beach. Let's see what the quality is like over here. It's looking a little bit dirty, I'm not gonna lie. You see guys, here's one of the problems about, oh, I just walked through a fucking spider. You guys see here, this is one of the problems with rivers. Rivers are always a source of environmental pollution. Look at all the trash just in here that just gets washed up in here when it's a high tide or rainy season. It's pretty bad. Well, here we are guys, came down this little bamboo path to this viewing platform. It looks out to the river. It looks like there's somebody out there fishing. But I don't know what this is. is some sort of fishing trap or is it something to prevent the garbage from flowing into here? Because as you can see, there's a lot of trash, unfortunately. See, you guys can see the, the wall over there, bamboo. I don't quite understand what it is for. Do you know why? Why is there bamboo walls over here? But yeah, there's a barge right there just sitting out there anchored up. Looks like you have a port where they load shipping containers. This is definitely a more remote area that people don't really come to. I mean, foreigners, of course, locals probably. There's two locals sitting here just in, enjoying the view and chatting together. But wow, pretty cool. Look at that, lots of flip-flops, lots of water bottles. Maybe there's some treasure down there. KFC, balls. 
All right, guys, we hop back on the bike here. We're heading down the main road, back north to the center of this area as we got about two hours left on the bike to explore and you don't want to be too far away. But you know what, now we're going to be in search for something to drink, probably get some water really quick and then find a place to sit down and eat. Get pretty hungry here. Lots of restaurants on the side street here, well, the main road, but a little too noisy and I think it's a little bit too dirty in terms of you know dust and dirt coming off of the road so I'd like to get to a side street to find some food all right this is really really local here we have some looks like traditional style houses over here you have the brown wood on top of what it looks like maybe some concrete with the old traditional triangle looking roofs. Well, we just made a pit stop here at some end of the road towards the river. There is a temple complex in this area, I guess, uh, right behind me. There's actually uh, a monk up in there. I just saw him. I don't know if he's still sitting there. Oh yeah, he's there. I don't really know what this area is, but it's kind of right next to some, looks like government or some state kind of shipyard area but just need a little break off the bike well there is a little view on the river here let me show you what it looks like so as you can see this is the view of bangkok right here this is where a lot of the main buildings are straight ahead now i'm trying to pinpoint a building that maybe i know of but i don't know of them that well so i can't really tell where exactly that is if i had to guess it's somewhere by Siam maybe? I have no idea to be honest. But it's actually quite a beautiful view. Now it is very gray, but what can you do? Nice little breeze along the river here, I can tell you that. There's a really big ship sitting on the other side that you can kind of see. Oh, this is really cool, we found some remote pathways on the west side of this area here. Now these pathways are very small. As you can hear, there's a motorbike behind me. And you can only fit one. See, these pathways are very narrow and uh, there was a motorbike coming and they weren't slowing down and we had to rush off the side and actually almost fell off. It was pretty dangerous, but uh, that's what life is like in these remote areas. Oh, gotta get some speed to get up this hill. Well, these pathways were sure made for uh, bikes and walking. It's definitely really narrow, one person only. You have two motorbikes going past and it gets really tight. Super remote, super local. It's a bit hard to go through here one-handed while recording. Pretty much like lost in this area. But it's okay because we'll find our way out. We got Google Maps in case, but you know, this is what exploring is all about here. Just kind of going with the wind and you know, getting lost. And so they do have piping here. As you can see, the government has built piping to, uh, you know, send probably cleaner water to this area. Maybe it's plumbing. So just stumbled upon this house here. You can see there's a door mailbox, but there's vines that have overgrown it by a lot. And in fact, I believe it's abandoned, I think, because there's not really a pathway going in there it's so overgrown so maybe somebody used to live here at one point and then you know they kicked the bucket and no longer are there really really interesting but we just passed some people that were picking fruit out of a tree they were pretty friendly they said hello good evening how are you pretty much oh look here you have like a little fish farm maybe some more houses See, these are the pathways here. They're very old, very overgrown. And it uh, looks like people don't use them anymore. You know, maybe there's a different pathway on the other side. Oh, here's another one. This is their pathway. Oh yeah, they live there. They got a mailbox. Another house over there. This is a very, very rural area. Very beautiful. I'm trying my best to stay on this path while riding a bike one-handed. I've almost fell off about four times. This is what life is like in this area. You know, very rural. Wow, check out this place. It's got a moat around their house. 
Isn't that pretty cool? But yeah, look at this house right here. Wow. Have their own moat. It's like something out of a fairy tale. A Thai fairy tale. Whoa. Almost fell off. So I mean, this is hard to ride a bike with one hand and video and, and uh, narrate this uh, journey. But wow, look at that. Look at the roofing on that. Oh, a squirrel. A squirrel just jumped into the tree. Oh, that house has some beautiful roofing. Well guys, we decided to return the bike and we're going to head back across the river and find some food over there. It was a real sweaty environment and uh, I think we had enough of the bike riding for now, so we're going to hit the streets, walk, and carry on the video over there. Wow. Alright guys, it's been about 30 minutes. We got off of the boat at the pier and we're actually walking back in towards the uh, Sukhumvit Road area and stopped by the store, grabbed a bottle of water, dumped it on my head to refresh myself. But as we're walking down the street here, it's pretty interesting. I saw a sign that says Bangkok Design Week. Oh, there's a sign right here coming up. Here you can see it, Bangkok Design Week. All these trees on the street, they have this mesh material on them that are different colors. Now I don't know if it's to make it look very decorative and colorful at nighttime as the lights shine against it. But it's interesting. I've never seen anything like that. And I saw it at first and thought, hmm, are they like trying to protect the tree? What are they trying to do? But as it is a mesh material, the tree can breathe. So it's pretty cool. All right, just about at Sukhumvit Road here. Just got to pass these spicy, magic, you know, sensual, erotic massages that they have over here. Just keep walking straight and don't look, right? Whoops. All right, a bit of change of plans here. We're actually gonna go back to the house to chill out for a bit because we're pretty beat from the long day so far. But I did stop at 7-Eleven to get one of their toasties, the iconic sandwiches from there. And this is just a ham and cheese traditional sandwich for 29 baht. Let's see exactly what it tastes like. Mm. Mm. Pretty good for less than a dollar. Cheese is melted, it's nice and crispy. I approve. It's a good little snack. Obviously it's not enough to really hold you over for a long time, but less than a dollar is a good sandwich. Now I've actually bought the pulled pork one before and I brought it home and um, put it in the microwave and it was pretty terrible. Having it in the panini maker that they have at 7-Eleven is so much better, so much fresher. Definitely don't recommend putting them in the microwave, but we're gonna go chill out and we'll see you in a bit. So this place is called Texas Chicken, I believe. Established in San Antonio, Texas in 1952. And somehow it made its way to Bangkok, Thailand or Thailand or other places in Asia. This is a pretty cool seating area up here. There is nobody up here though, because they are not using the AC up here. Actually, they have it right here. It's blowing out, but it's a little bit warm. I mean, I wouldn't mind it, but nobody else wants to be up here because it's not that comfortable. But this is what the seating area looks like. They have a advertisement going on out the front, so you can't really see out the window, unfortunately. But they do have soda up here and other things like that. It's a pretty good, decent place. It's a little noisy in here, but let's try these fries here. Some sweet and sour sauce. Really good. These fries are super good. They're thick fries. Almost like bar fries. But this right here is a Tex wrap. I was gonna get a chicken burger, but I decided to get a chicken wrap to see how good it is. And because wraps are a little bit healthier than you know all that bun, I feel like maybe I'm wrong. A pretty big wrap. A little skinny though. It's definitely long. There is some sauce in there. Let's try this out. Mm. They loaded this wrap with chicken. There's like some maybe cheese or mayo in there. There's some lettuce. It's pretty heavy. Pretty good. They just put chicken tenders in it. That's all it is. So this place has three floors. The bottom floor is actually where you order. There's some very minimal seating down here. But this is what it looks like. Order from there. Wave your hand. 
to get back outside. There you have it. Here's all the crazy advertisement of Texas chicken. Well, that Texas chicken uh, was mediocre. I paid 115 baht for a wrap, fries, and a Coke Zero. Not so bad. Early nerve settler perhaps. It's certainly